Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Why Twitter Matters for Your Business Development Strategy. My name is Jeff Murphy. I'm an Associate Director in the BU Alumni Relations Office, as well as a proud alumnus from the 2006 class from the BU Graduate School of Management. I'm delighted that you've all chosen to join us for today's professional development webinar series. Today's webinar is sponsored by the BU Alumni Association and the BU Development and Alumni Relations Office and is offered to our 300,000 alumni around the globe. Throughout your career, the BU Alumni Association is committed to helping you define and achieve your professional goals. We aim to do this by providing alumni with access to a series of valuable online tools and social media communities. As we continue to build this webinar series, it's really important to us that we get your opinion on how we're doing. Uh, so with that in mind, later today we're going to be sending all of you a survey email. Uh, please know that your feedback on our webinar series is very important to us. So for those of you that I know are joining us from as far away as uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Glendale, California, Chicago, uh, I see my friend Sid is joining us from New York City. Hello, Sid. Um, and we even have somebody today on from Quito, Ecuador. Um, again, we really value your opinion. You matter to us. Please make sure you let us know how we're doing. Before I introduce today's speaker, a couple brief housekeeping notes. As you know by now, this webinar is being hosted on the Adobe Connect online meeting platform. If you experience any trouble at all with the audio or visual portions of this presentation, please contact Adobe Connect directly. I'll give you a phone number if you want to jot it down really quickly. Uh, it's 1-800-422-3623. Our speaker today is very eager to answer any questions that you might have, and you're all welcome to submit them throughout the presentation using the question and answer chat box that you should see located at the bottom of your screen below the slide. Uh, we hope to get to as many questions as we can today during today's webinar, so please make sure to, to go ahead and submit those as you have them. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce our alumna presenter for the day, Anita O'Malley. Uh, Anita is a BU College of General Studies graduate from 1981 and a COM grad from 1983. She's now the CEO of Perspective, a social media marketing firm uh, that helps companies use the power of social and digital marketing to build awareness and gain opportunities. Her firm's packaged programs were recently cited for their evolutionary approach to demand generation using social media at Oracle Open World, one of the IT industry's largest trade shows. She's an avid blogger and sought after speaker on social marketing initiatives. Previously, she held management positions in corporate marketing, where she architected strategic marketing plans, defined the corporate brand, and managed demand generation activities. She's also worked for several New York metro area advertising agencies serving Fortune 500 companies. Anita, thank you so much for joining us today, and as soon as I get your slides up, uh, the floor will be all yours. Thank you, Jeff. Can you hear me okay? Sounds great on my end. All righty. I did it. This is good. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Nice to, to speak to my, my old classmates and some not, but some old classmates and, and, and fellow alum. Um, BU was a an integral part of my life and I have a special place in my heart for BU and I would do anything for them. So, um, but anyway, welcome and it's nice to speak with everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about using Twitter um, for your business. And the reason that um, we developed this, this training series is because we have many people that come to us, many clients of ours come to us, in, you know, in both the business to business environment in the business to consumer environment. And um, so they're, they've either, you know, started posting, they put up Twitter, or maybe they've just totally ignored it for their business. But the common question everyone asks is, what do I use Twitter for? I mean, what, why does this even matter in my business? So I'm posting, I'm posting, but, you know, now what? So we developed this a little, this, this show to review how you can use Twitter um, when to monetize and to bring opportunity to your for your um, business activities, okay? Some of the questions that um, we get are, you know, how do you start a conversation? How do you get people to follow you? Um, I post all the time, but now what? Um, how does this benefit my business? There are over 500 million people on Twitter now and um, it's becoming more relevant for business in both those fields, B2B and B2C. 
people don't want to be sold to. They want you to establish a relationship with them. And people will ask also, why do I need Twitter? Well, because if you're doing any sort of business development, whether you own your own company, you're in sales, you're in marketing, you're in um, you know, business dev positions, if your customers are playing soccer and you're only playing baseball, well, you better learn how to play soccer and you better meet them on the soccer field because they're all over. They're not just on the phone anymore. They're not just on email anymore. And many of them don't in certain industries that we work with, they don't even answer the phone anymore. So this is another playing field and it's really shifted the way business communications uh, work today. Our agenda today, we're going to run through a little bit of basics because um, we're going to, we like to do that because, um, you know, sometimes people are different levels of use, okay? And we're going to talk about optimizing your profile, growing your community, hosting content, and then driving business opportunities through this powerful medium. Let's talk a little bit about basics. Okay, and here's some basic terms. Now, this is going to be a quick run through. This is not extensive by any means. However, what this, if you're a, if you're a non-user of Twitter or a, a very basic user, um, this will just bring up some of the key points that you need to know in order to use um, Twitter for business. Um, also, I would suggest that if you go on YouTube, there are fantastic tutorials. Uh, you know, basics def de define tutorials for you. What is a tweet? Tweet is at 140 characters. You can talk about um, your topic, and that's why Twitter is really good for pointing. It's I look at it as a stock ticker tape. It's good for pointing your audience to other places, to your content, to links, to photos, etc. Okay. A retweet is when you tweet something that was posted by someone else. Okay, and um, you'll see, you know, examples of all of these. But on, if you look in the bottom of the slide, okay, and a retweet is basically a reciprocal sort of activity. The the social, the art of social networking involves reciprocity, and it's about gratitude. It's about um, you know sharing. And it's about um, congratulating, and and it's it's a whole spirit that really um, really helps you do business in today's communications environment. What is a mention? A mention is when you're tweeting. You put out you put your 140 character tweet out, and you use someone's username. So what happens is that it's still a regular tweet, but the person, and you'll see here with Jim's tweet. The, these people that he put the at sign in front of will see the tweet that he just did. And, and it, it, it's just a kind of a direct way of talking to these, um, these other users. What is a reply? A reply is done by um, you click the reply link of a previously sent tweet. Basically, um, the only people that see a reply are the people following you and the person you reply to. Okay, so it sort of creates a conversation stream. If you look at the, if you look at Twitter as basically, um, a ch it's sort of a chat room, and um, it, it's sort, it's sort, of, it's a good metaphor for what, how you use it. You can use it to either chat with large groups or even individuals, based on how you, um, how you engineer your tweets. What is a direct message? So this is the the this is the opposite now. Now you're going to take um, a tweet and you can actually privately converse with another Twitter user. Okay, but you can only do this with people that have followed you and that you have followed. So you pretty much open up the permission gate to be able to speak to each other privately. Very important and key feature in business development. A hashtag is a way for people to um, categorize their tweets. Or posts in order to group the tweets by topic. Okay, many people will um, search for tweets on a common topic and and join in that chat. So it's sort of a chat room, and the hashtag creates this this 
curated area on that topic. So if you search on Lost, the TV show, you'll get everyone who tweeted and put that hashtag into the show. So it becomes a conversation. It's, it's a really neat thing to do. Okay, so let's go to the next section, and that's, that's about optimizing your Twitter profile, okay? Basically, this is, we built this section, it's about creating a brand that stands out. Often, uh, you, your customers, partners, or even employees first see you on social sites. So, it's really important to, um, to have a, a professional and consistently branded profile. Let's look at three steps. So number one, we have a name and photo, okay? And the, the photograph of yourself is always key. It's, um, it's personal, you want it friendly, and you also want it to be high resolution. Make sure it shows up good. The next step, number two, is your bio. So you have an area in Twitter, just underneath your name, where you can take your professional description and elaborate. Include keywords in here, okay? Um, include a website or even your LinkedIn URL, okay? And you'll see that Jill Rowley did this very well. You'll see she's got her LinkedIn URL there as well as just some keywords and key, key professional skills that she has. Number three, a custom background. And this is really, we, we, do, we often do this, um, we actually do this for everyone because what it does is it differentiates your organization so that you, you're pretty much using this almost like a, a brochure. Again, it's probably, actually it's more like a business card because you can't say that much on it, but you can use this and capitalize on this space that you're given by Twitter to put your website maybe other social sites, contact information, and you can even put a short blur about what your company does. So that, um, that's a key thing to do there. By the way, that is not clickable. They're not hot linkable in the background. All you can do is, because it comes in as a graphic when you develop it, so all you really want to do is just put the addresses to your social sites there to show the other places that you reside online. Let's talk about growing your Twitter community, okay? And this is important because your Twitter community, your, your, the power of your posts are only as good as the amount of people that are in your community that you've built. So these are your followers. These are your customers, your prospects, your partners, okay? And you want to find them and you want to follow them and then begin to engage with their posts make comments retweet reply and i would say i would say probably most of the time people that you follow do tend to follow you back on twitter okay it's sort of a there's sort of an etiquette involved there if they're interested in you if you're in their space they will follow you back and it's just basically you put yourself out there and you will gain the following the other key thing to do is to follow your competitors so go to your competitor sites and see who's following them because chances have it that if you have the same services same product that you're offering the people following them might tend to follow you as well. So go in there, find who follows them, and you follow who's following them, and see if they also follow you. The other key thing to do is to engage in trending topics. Use your hashtags. If you sell, um, if you sell automobiles, okay, or say you sell Bentleys, okay, you want to use a hashtag for Bentley and Bentley because anybody who is when you're tweeting is anyone who is interested in purchasing a, purchasing a Bentley would go online and search under that hashtag and see what people are saying 
about a Bentley. And, and that's almost, it's, it's like a chat room for a Bentley. So you want to be involved in that. It, ex, it increases your exposure when you add the hashtags. People will see your tweets even though they're not following you. Always thank followers and use that thank you to send a link to more information. If you'll see here, ExecSense did that. This is a nice marketing follow-up where they're giving 20% off to, and to you for following them and they give you the code there. So that's always a nice touch. Personalizing with lists. You can monitor your Twitter stream through lists and you can interact with your people through lists. So the Twitter stream grows large very quickly. And so what you can do is when you have someone that you're following and say you go and you follow all your customers, you would want to make a list and it's in the lists area of Twitter of your customers. And you can hear it, you can see up here it says create a list and in the customers what you do is you simply tag them and put the, it's, it's intuitive, it's fairly easy to do, tag the handle that you just followed into the customers list. Hey everybody, bear with us for a second. I think that we lost Anita. Um, as soon as she gets back on, we'll get back up and running. I apologize for this uh, delay. Um, do me a favor, just sit tight for a few minutes and we'll get her back up. Hi, Anita, I see you're back on, um, but we seem to have lost your audio. Um, once you get your microphone connected again, let me know. I'm on. Great. I think we got you back up. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. I'm hardwired in, too. So, okay, where, where did you... Um, did we do the lists? Did you hear anything for that, Jeff? We got you. You started on the lists uh, for a few seconds, and we lost you somewhere in the middle. Okay. So basically, lists are about organizing those thousands of followers, and you want to put them into different categories, and it's really easy to do this on Anita, I think we lost your audio again. Um, I apologize, everybody, for this, if you can hear me. Um, Anita, could you try maybe re, uh, reattaching your microphone? Sorry, everybody, for the delay. Okay, can you hear me, Jeff? I have you now. Thanks, Anita. Sorry about that. I just, I don't know what's happening. It just, it, it also, it stopped after I had the connection broken. But anyway, so we'll try to get through it. Um, so personalizing with lists, you want to put, basically organize your followers and and your follows and you put them into these lists and then you can actually view what your customers are doing what your comp competitors are doing what your prospects are doing and it really helps you to do that business development okay using a tool to organize TweetDeck is a phenomenal free tool on the internet that you can um, that you can download and there's a mobile version of TweetDeck that allows you to manage your 
individual Twitter account or your organizational Twitter account. And it allows you to post, it allows you to schedule posts, it allows you to monitor if you have a customer or a prospect that you want to monitor their tweets, you can actually put it in here. Okay, you can actually feed it into TweetDeck. And it's great. And it shows also you can put in, you can see where you were mentioned. And you'll see down there how the, the they come in as columns. So it's really great. Um, it's really great to have this tool. It also allows when you're in an organization, say you're in marketing and you have quite a few people that you'd like to tweet, maybe you're at, a, at an event. Well, it allows for you to, um, to have multiple users on the, the tool at the same time. So TweetTech's a great tool to use, that we recommend. So let's talk about posting content that matters, okay? So content pretty much is the foundation of social engagement. It's how you start your conversation online with your social, for your social networking and your social followers. Let's talk about some rules for high impact content, okay? You want to make your tweets useful. What specialty knowledge do you have that you can share with people, okay? Twitter is not, and, and really any social media sites are not a promotional tool, okay? They're, um, they're really never to be used for selling. It's a, the, 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 the social platforms are a selling by not selling, um, they have a selling by not selling motive and what you want to do is you, you want to use it to you want to use it to show your expertise to use strong copy use keywords because Twitter has a search engine as well and and you want to use your hashtags when you're on topic again that increases your viewing impressions when people look up the hashtag and they see your content okay and you'll see here I have an example of cloud computing, which is an, as a, a technology term, and I'm sure everybody's heard of the cloud. Um, but if you put in the hashtag cloud computing, you can see all of the folks that have actually tweeted expert tweets about, um, you know, expertise about cloud computing. So you you want to make sure you're tweeting very relevant things, sharing your culture. Think about posting something happening maybe in your office. Here's two companies that, um, that you know, we've worked with that, that have really, really used Twitter to show off an office culture, okay? And it really helps to bring it to life with photos. Um, Twitter is very photo friendly. We'll go over that next, but you'll see here. And this is really key to when you're recruiting people, you're recruiting talent for your organization. Your talent and your, your recruits can see how, um, how your, you know, how your company interacts or what it, what the people, you know, what they look like, how they converse, what their business, what their offices look like. It's a great thing to do. Links, links rule because the links are really what Twitter is about. Twitter in 140 characters, you can't really do, you know, you can't boil the ocean, but you can point people to places. So, you know, I have a workshop. I'm going to, and you'll see in this tweet here, I'm going to point people to my registration page and make sure that registration page has a heck of a lot of information on it. Because all you could say in the tweet is just a little teaser. It's really, think of Twitter as a set of headlines. Okay. You can also post a link to your company's most recent blog article, okay? And and you can um you can basically hello okay you still see me I don't know I just lost this for a minute but um you can post a link to your company's blogs you can post a link to your company's events you can post a link to um, maybe even industry article that you feel you know that that really made sense in your industry or for your customers and put a little comment before it. Okay, so sharing. Let's talk about quickly sharing your content with follow and how you do that is you can just click on a retweet button and add your own commentary. So you'll see here that what I did in this tweet was um, MASH social media, if 
funny tweets your brand should take seriously. That was the, the tweet, and you'll see the RT up here. Well, I added my own insight to it because I like to personalize when I see um, expert tweets and I retweet them. So it kind of keeps you from being just a, you know, autom automaton. I want to add my personal expertise. So I said something, you know, it's short, but I said clever Twitter marketing. Okay. The other thing, the other good thing to do is to converse. So this is really key in business development. Um, you get a customer or prospect to follow you and um, you can start to actually have conversations with you. You'll see these two gentlemen here. They met each other at a conference and um, you know so so Irvish conversed with Joe and um, you'll see how they they talk to each other. Hi nice to see you, nice to see you. So it was it was it's really cool how they do it and of course, of course Irvish put the the um, hashtag for the conference in there as well so that anybody seeing the conference would see this tweet as well as that he went there. So use images. We talked about that a little bit. When you upload an image or a video directly to Twitter, this is amazing. 75% more chance of being seen. People are visual people. They want to see um, they want to see things. And the images are now um, Twitter enables image feeding directly into um, into the feeds. And You'll see here Zappos does this. I thought this was really great. They're doing, you know, this employee training, and um, so they they tweet the picture, and it's it just gives you a good sense of their culture. Okay, using video, video. There's a there's a service that's now um it's now owned by Twitter. It's called Vine, and Vine actually posts into Twitter, and it's if you load it onto your it's a mobile app. You load it onto your cell phone, and it um, it actually will post directly into your Twitter account when you're logged in. So it allows you to take a six-second video clip, and it's neat because you can use it to, you know, just share humor, off its cultural things, um, events, maybe someone saying hello. Um, you can use it to showcase a new product. You know, take a picture of it and say something quick in six minutes. Um, and you'll see here these two companies did it. This company on the left here, they were at a golf outing. They showed the um, if you if you were to click this in Twitter, this tweet, you'd see the golf cart um, coming through the um, through the through the finish line. This gentleman here is in financial services. Um, he this actually this ticker moves up as he talks about what the market's doing at this point. So it just adds that. You know that robust dimension to um, to their their tweets to their content. Okay, five ways to drive business opportunities, and um, this is really what it's all about, right? So let's get down to the to the nitty gritty because engagement really is about um, it's a two way street, and and let's see how we can some just five quick ways to engage and, and help us get some value out of this very popular platform. Monitor Twitter for leads. Twitter's full of intelligence, okay? So you can use this URL here. It's search.twitter.com and you can search for industry phrases, questions. You can search for mentions of your company name and um, you'll see what comes up, and you'll see here what I typed in here is social media um, training. I'll be able to see all of the tweets that came through that had the word social media training in it. Why am I interested in that? Well, because, you know, maybe there are folks tweeting that are looking for some good social media training. So, wow, that would be a prospect for me, right? And once I would find them, I can start a dialogue with them and um, maybe help them answer some questions. And remember, I'm not selling. I'm not saying, hey, we have a, it's more like, hi, you know, did you see this? This is, this is how you, um, this is how you use LinkedIn for lead generation. And I might send them a link to, um, I don't know, a page on my website or, or um, maybe a, a link to a downloadable PDF. So you really want to get clever and use the, use it for Intel. 
Two, build online credentials. Okay. You want to use the Twitter favorites feature. There's a feature there. And when you when a tweet comes through, um, you can actually favorite it. And one a, a neat thing to do with it is to actually use it um, to rep as a repository of your company recommendations or positive comments about your company. So, um, and, and what you can do is when someone asks about your company, you can send them to this page link. So you'll see the URL here, it's twitter.com, and then your username slash favorites. And it actually creates this little repository. So all the tweets that you starred and say, you know, it was customers saying, hey, great job, you did a great, um, you know, um, I love my new whatever. Thanks for coming in and, and revamping my computer. You did a great job kind of thing. Whatever it is that you sell or that you produce, you can favorite those tweets. And they go into this little area. And, <clears throat> boy, it's just really powerful to be able to send somebody to this and show them what all the good that people have said about you. Number three, promote your events. Use Twitter before your events, during and after your events. <clears throat> you want to drive your attendance directly to a sign-up page. So when you are, again, remember, you only have 140 characters, so you can't say too much, but you can tell them, you know, you, you can say something like, you know, you, you, would, you, would you want to learn about blah, 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 come to our blah, 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 and then, you know, the, and then you put the, the hot link to your reg page. Okay, before you start tweeting about your event, create a hashtag about your event, okay, so that anybody, and you can ask people when they talk about your event or when they tweet about your event to use that hashtag because then anyone who used that hashtag, you'll be able to see, um, you know, all of the people that spoke about your event. You can also engage in conversation with them, you'll be able to send them things. Um, after the event, you can host a Twitter chat, okay, because you know where they all are, and you can invite them all based on that hashtag. And so, so the, I guess the the point of the using the social and any really any social platforms for an event is so that the event is not one and done. You're creating a, a sticky follower community, okay. And um, one thing that we've done with we have a client that we've done some contests where they go to big industry events and we incent the people to come to their booth using a hashtag and um and you know whoever when they get to the booth and they come they come over whoever uses the hashtag the most they get an entry to win a certain prize so um it's just a really neat and different way to stand out at an event Number four, chats. So if you, again, I keep likening Twitter to a chat room. It's really, a, it creates a micro community when you use a hashtag, okay? It's, you're, you're organizing around a specific topic, and when you set up a Twitter chat, it's just another way of saying, we're all going to chat at this time uh, in this place, and the in this place part is the hashtag. So anyone chatting using that hashtag and see the other people chatting, okay, because that aggregates the conversation. In order to set up the event, you'll set a date and time for, um, you know, maybe you want to do an ongoing chat. Maybe you want to do it once a week. You're going to chat about uh, yoga, okay. You have a yoga studio, and you're going to talk about, you know, some, some yoga tips for, you know, better posturing or whatever. So you can make up a, a hashtag and say your studio is, let's say your studio is, um, you know, uh, yoga body. Okay. So you can make up the hashtag yoga body chat, and then you can encourage people. Okay. Everybody, you know, every Tuesday at three to three 30, we're going to chat about great yoga postures and you get on there and you chat and you keep it going. You know, you can also, um, search for chats. If you go to, um, if you go to the tweetreports.com slash Twitter chat schedule, there is, um, this is actually a private individual that, um, that um, lists different chats. So that's kind of fun to do too. But, and then again, another way to, to find chats is to, you know, just hashtag, 
and put the name, put the put the subject in and see if there's a chat on it. The last point and the last way, number five, on, on driving business opportunities um, is the press. And this is really key for especially um, you know, my fellow com graduates who would know about how how difficult it is sometimes to engage press or PR for your company. Um, whether it's a small business or a large company, um, what's happened is that the press has now migrated themselves onto Twitter. And they request sources and story topics through Twitter because it's a fast moving platform. And as you can imagine, media and press are also fast moving. And um, so if you are interested in getting press and, and for your company to increase your brand awareness, you you can do a couple things. You can um, you know look for the influencers in the industry, look for their blogs, look for maybe it's an you know it's an editor of a um, of a major computer magazine, and you're you're a technology company. Um, you start find and start to follow their authors on Twitter. Okay, follow um follow their blogs. Technorati is one blog search engine. Um, muckrack.com. Now, if you're really serious about this, you can actually, this is a paid subscription and it used to be free, but it's paid now. It was so good. And you can find and follow, um, all the journalists you need on, um, on Twitter. And you can actually, you know, you can pitch them and, you know, do things like ask them, you know, um, tell them that you're a source for a certain expertise and that you're here and, and you can also, if they follow you, can you can also direct message them with pitches. So um, it's a great way to just get a relationship going with your journalists or your reporters or even your bloggers in your specific area. Okay. With that being said, we are up to questions. Um, um, I know that um, we have a question and answer session coming up, and Jeff is going to moderate that, but. Um, you're all going to receive an email from Jeff with details on how to get a tip sheet from us. Um, you'll want to follow and message us on Twitter because part of my training when I, um, when I work with my customers is that I not only give the theory, but I like to also have people actually practically use it. And I, I like people to go right into it and use it. And then you'll also get, um, he'll tell you how to subscribe to our um, social tips newsletter. So with that being said, um, thank you for your time. Sorry about the technical difficulty, but go ahead, Jeff. No problem at all. Thank you, Anita. We really appreciate your time. Um, one of those technical problems was actually my fault, so don't blame yourself for that. Um, we've got some great questions that have already started rolling in, um, a lot of nuts and bolts about Twitter. Um, again, please feel free to, to use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen to get those questions in. Uh, we'll take those. We've got uh, plenty of time to answer some questions this morning or this afternoon if you're in Boston. Um, Sandy wrote in with a question, uh, Anita, that you and I knew in advance we'd probably get, um, and it was about the custom background that you talked about. Um, obviously a huge piece of branding your Twitter account and your company. Um, can you talk a little, bit, a little bit about how somebody would go about creating or adding their own custom background? That's great. That's a great question, and that's um, one of the questions that we, um, that we do get from folks that want to do that. Um, the, the custom background is added through your Twitter settings button up in the top and you'll see um, you'll see up on your top right it'll allow you to go in there and um, you go into the um, then you go over to the left and it's in the, the design area in the profile area and um, it's the design is for the background and it has Twitter has a, um, a certain there's dimensions that you can use that um, if you just Google it, you'll find those dimensions. It's, um, it's fairly simple. They're, they're published all over the place. Even Twitter publishes them. And you would you'd make up a JPEG or a, um, or a, you know, a, a GIF background. And um, you, you need a photo editing piece of software. So that could be Photoshop. It could be Illustrator, something that would generate for you a, a JPEG or GIF. Um, you know, I suggest you... If you know how to do it, do it. If you have an artist or a company that can do it for you, 
it's a um, it's a great thing to do. Uh, sorry if you hear the phone ringing in the background. I apologize for that. Um, Sandy asked another great question, uh, one that I actually had as a uh, new Twitter user myself, and that's about modified tweets. Um, Anita, I get the sense that that's sort of a, a cultural um, expectation on Twitter. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about modifying somebody else's tweet or using the MT sign? Boy, you know, I don't do it much. I have to honestly tell you, I don't modify tweets that much. Um, so I, 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 I can't really, I can't really answer that in depth. Um, the what I do though is I, as I said before, I will summarize a tweet by adding my own insight to it. So sometimes it does require my, um, it requires my, you know, taking out just some of the, or, or shortening some of the original terms, or sometimes I'll even shorten their link. Um, but I haven't used the MT symbol. I suppose that's probably what I'm doing without using the MT symbol. Um, and it's probably a better practice because you're, you're, you can, I guess, I guess look at the tweet as being copyrighted, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's the best I've, I can tell you. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 as a new Twitter user, I had the same question because um, basically yeah. you could put RT in front of anything um, yeah. and use somebody's Twitter hashtag or Twitter handle to um, make it seem like you were tweeting, um, retweeting something that they had written when in fact they hadn't. So I guess you know the Sandy, the answer mm -hmm. from my point of view, it's you know it's it's a a symptom of having only 140 characters and finding mm -hmm. yourself, as Anita talked about, you know, comment on somebody else's tweet, but in order for you to be able to add your commentary, sometimes you might have to, to truncate their original tweet. And that's where I think, um, from my point of view, and again, I'm no expert, uh, but using the MT, you know, sort of um, signifies that you did have to alter that person's original tweet. Yeah, I mean, that that would make sense. And you know what, I, I probably should do that more. Um, I just, I haven't even it but it is good practice and it's probably um it's probably good for, for you know just copyright and it's it's probably the best thing to do but yeah i'm doing it all the time i guess I didn't think about that sure um <clears throat> cora asks a great question um you talked a little bit about tweet deck um how is that different or similar from other tools like hootsuite okay that's a good question tweet deck is a very deep dive into Twitter. Um, we use TweetDeck. We actually use TweetDeck for prospecting campaigns that we do for our, our clients. So, um, because we go so far into Twitter, and it's really, it has, you know, it's it's like it's really um, Twitter on steroids because you can you can post ahead of time. You can sit down on Sunday night and you can post for a whole week. Um, you can follow, you can follow mentions, you can follow competitors, you can direct message, you can archive your direct message. It's amazing. It's a very in-depth tool. Hootsuite is more platforms. Hootsuite allows you to take in um, Facebook and um, LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn. Yeah, it used to be able to make you take in LinkedIn. Um, I don't use Hootsuite as much anymore because we use Twitter so much in the business dev side. But the Hootsuite's a little bit more functional, but more shallow. So so you can't get so many columns into Twitter. The tweet deck is really for Twitter only. But the Hootsuite's more of a sh more shallow view across all the platforms and a manageability across the platforms. Great, we got some sort of substantive uh, or uh, some interesting questions um, that, Anita, I think um, I'd love to get your opinion on, although I realize that you probably um, won't have a necessarily right or wrong answer for this. Ed asks a question, you know, he's a, uh, as a computer program, computer programmer who has the same skill set as thousands of other programmers, how would I differentiate my skill set and offerings from all the rest? So obviously that that's a uh, you know career related question about differentiating yourself. But how would how would somebody who feels that way about their skill set use Twitter to differentiate themselves? Oh, okay. So can I can I still move the slides, Jeff? Absolutely. All right, I'm doing that right now. I'm going to show you what Jill did. Jill does this really well. So we're back onto the um, the Jill Rally slide, and Jill is really if you read her um, 
her profile, how she brands herself, and this is about personal branding. Modern marketing expert, social selling evangelist, always be connecting. Um, Jill kind of makes these terms up. Uh, Jill is really in marketing, and she um, she's a marketeer, and um, she trains salespeople on how to, you know, how to do great selling using great marketing techniques and great social techniques. So she's been very clever, if you can see, and and she's not the only one of her kind. I mean, she happens to be, you know, I happen to do the same thing, and and. You know, but there and there are many marketers out there, and there are many salespeople and sales evangelists. But if you look at how she she did this, you you want to find your specific niche. It's always good to niche yourself, and um, and try to think of just new and creative ways to define what you do. But she's really a master at this. Um, and look at this. I mean, an information concierge. So that's just a fancy word for. Um, Putting content out. And information concierge is find great content and post it and share it with your followers. You're the concierge of information. But isn't that clever how she did this? I, I really admire um, you know, her. So you can use that as an example. That would be helpful. I hope that answered the question. Great. Thanks, Anita. Uh, Josh has another um, interesting question. In terms of getting press, which you were you know, chatting about at the end of your presentation, how many reporters do you feel like it's appropriate to tweet at at once? So if Josh has a list of 20 reporters that he's compiled, how would you suggest um, him getting in touch with those folks? What's the best way to reach out to increase his chances of uh, you know, getting, getting some, some press profiling? So I don't think that there is any restriction in terms of being a source. But if you are pitching a story or pitching a storyline from your organization, the reporters simply want to give them exclusivity, so you don't want to pitch that. This is, this is straight PR. You don't want to pitch 20 at once for an exclusive story. When you pitch a report with a story, they're assuming that, that that's an exclusive, and that's something where you know maybe you'll give them a certain amount of time after you pitch it in a tweet, the story, to respond to you. And if they don't, then go to your second choice. That would be a story. But for a source, to put yourself out there or to put a, an expert in your organization out as a source for, say, they're a cloud computing expert, okay, and you want to pitch them, you can certainly pitch each reporter individually. And you'll want to look for the reporter, look for their handles on Twitter. Or if you're very serious about it, use the, you know, get the muckrack.com subscription. Um, and the other thing is that if you go on to the, the online publication sites, the reporters on the online, on their online versions of their pubs, have their Twitter handles listed, many of them. So um, I hope that helps answer your question. That's great. Um... Got a couple more nuts and bolts questions. Actually, there's one here I'm not sure about. Aaron has um, asked if you're familiar with something called Twidium or Twidium, T-W-I-D-U-I-M. Um, is that something you've heard of before, Anita? Uh, is that, I, let me, I'm just checking, I'm looking on my, um, yeah, I have a, an app list. So just for everybody, this is actually a good question overall. Um, Twidium is an app, and, and what it does is, okay, I just looked it up, it is an app. So, so with each social platform, there are third-party app developers, okay, and there are boatloads of these, and there are boatloads of apps that, um, that will help you with the functionality and help you, um, for example, for example, there there's one where you can um, where you can actually go in for Twitter and you can find it's called um, tw follow. Oh, I can't. I, there's honestly there's hundreds of them, but there's there's one where you can actually go in, find who's following you and follow them back automatically. There's ones that you can find who isn't following you that you're following and get and dump them. 
Then now this Twid Twidia map, I'm looking this up here. Um, let me just see. It says, okay, so this is an analytics page. It says it includes statistics, performance, general information, and density values. So the other thing is, and this is like a clout score. I don't know if any, anyone's tried clout. Clout gives you a score of your overall social performance. And um, you know how much influence you have, how much reach you have in the in your social community. So an app like um, like Twid, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Twidium is something that's going to analyze. Okay, here's how many people followed you. Here's how many people. Um, here's how you grow. Sometimes it'll give you growth in comparison to your competitors or comparison to the industry and things like that. Um, so and the one thing I want to just caution against with apps too is that. Um, we have actually used um, actually several paid apps that are um, that are supposed to be for monitoring. I don't recommend them because unless you're with like a huge, you know, a huge, huge, you know, global conglomerate and you need to find every mention of your name on the globe. But if you're with a small to medium company and even some enterprise firms, it's really if you want to do monitoring, you really need to to look it look it up. Use a tweet deck and monitor yourself because. The apps that monitor for your name and monitor, find out where you're being mentioned and all that, do give you a lot of junk. It's like a fire hose. So they're not perfect and, and, and they'll fire hose you and, and it's just, it makes you more work for you to have to go through the fire hose and actually find what's relevant. So um, I have to tell you, and I'm you know an expert user of these platforms, I use very little in the way of apps um, the, because the the spirit of the social media, really, the social networking, and this is the this is the foundation of this discussion is that it's a it's a selling by not selling, it's a personalized engagement, it's it's conversation, it's not, you know, it's you it can't really be done on mass if you want to get um, any value out of it. Great, thanks, Anita. We've got a couple people who I think are still um, a bit confused by some of the language. Uh, Joan, for one, um, uh, is still um, not sure exactly what a hashtag is. Flora, I think, is looking for um, just another resource that could really sort of spell out the the very basics of uh, of Twitter. So, not to to make you review any detail. Um, but Anita, can you recommend a, a source either online or maybe a book that you know of that really sort of spells out the basics so that somebody who really needed a, a very basic review could sort of continue to learn more? Mm -hmm. Well, there's Twitter for dummies. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's a good start. There are many, many books, um, but I would recommend something simple like that. And uh, you don't even have to pay for it, honestly. If you just, um, there are so many blogs now um, in the marketing in, in social marketing, um, you can just type in, you know, um, Twitter basics to find, and you'll find a bevy of free information for you. Let me just re-explain a hashtag, too, for um, our other person that asked that. Um, a hashtag, again, is a, um, it's a, it's, you put the hashtag in front of a word, and everyone else that uses that hashtag with that word are all able to see each other so that when you you put the hashtag into the search engine at the top of Twitter and and you you put that in and you search on it every single person that used that hashtag with that word comes up in your window so it becomes like a chat room and um, and and it basically it aggregates and it curates all of those tweets everywhere that use that hashtag so you can see what everybody said about that subject and you can talk to other people I hope that helps great uh, Anita I want to put up your uh, very last slide here um, Rick was basically asking uh, if you could get a copy of these slides and so Rick the answer to that is um, Anita has promised to provide us with a more uh, a truncated version of the slides that we will make available on the BU alumni website. So keep your eye out for that. If you just navigate to bu.edu slash alumni and look for career tools, uh, you'll find the page for our professional development webinar um, series. Um, but 
also, as Anita said, you know, if you want a, another tip sheet, just feel free to, to follow and message her directly using her company's Twitter handle perspective. Um, of course, uh, I would encourage everybody to subscribe for their social biz 411 newsletter. Uh, and last but not least, I also want to encourage all of you, particularly those of you who are new to Twitter, uh, to please follow the BU Alumni Association. We have about 10,500 followers. We're tweeting every day about things that are happening on campus. Uh, we certainly will be tweeting about upcoming webinars, so make sure that you go to Twitter and search for BU Alumni Association. Anita, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Twitter is such an important piece of the social media landscape for businesses these days, and, and in my opinion, you know, as a Twitter user, it's, I don't think it's a platform that people can master easily without some guidance and so you've provided a really great outline for BU alumni today um, I can't thank you enough for your time uh, we really really appreciate it on behalf of the Alumni Association thank you so much uh, my thanks also go out today to all of our guests for participating I hope that you found value in our program and that you'll think about joining us for our next professional development webinar uh, it'll be coming up on April 23rd when alumna Colleen Dovecchio is going to present a session called how to find a career that you love uh, in the meantime I invite all of you to visit our library of on-demand webinars uh, which you can access uh, via our website at bu.edu slash alumni and and as always, if any of you out there, uh, BU alumni, are interested in presenting a future webinar or know another alum who would be a great presenter for this series, feel free to contact me directly in the Alumni Relations Office, or you can email me at jtmurphy at bu.edu. That's J as in Jeff, T as in Thomas Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y, at bu.edu. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Have a wonderful afternoon. Good